giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to our week one recap and our week two reviews. And boy, have I had a crazy weekend. How's everyone else's weekend? Did anyone compete? I know, Tegan, you did. Yeah, th yeah, things went pretty well. Obviously, my voice is still recovering, but I don't know. We had a pretty good time at Durham. Uh, moving on to Chris. Yeah, I, I just sat back and watched uh, the Grand, Grand Forks Regional thing. Look looked pretty good. A lot of fun watching while building robots at the same time. Dan? Uh, I just watched a lot of matches this weekend. It was a great time. Just got to kick back, relax. Yeah. What do you guys think right. of the game after week one? Like, is it what you thought it was going to be? Better or worse? I'm Climate's not a fan king of, for now. I'm not a fan of the field. It's too crowded. That's my that's my first thought. Chris? Uh, I think, you know, just watching week one, I was surprised that no teams were able to get all the uh, shots into the goal to get ready for uh, position control. I was kind of surprised that not a single match had that happen. But, well, it's only week one, so I guess we'll see what happens. That's true, Tegan. So I definitely don't want to talk about Durham. I'd like to... Yeah. Durham. All, right. all right, so let's start off with probably my favorite event so far because it's the only one I've been to. Uh, for a week one event, Durham College has always been particularly strong and coming out of the gate, it was clear that this has not changed for 2020 because in Quals 1, we saw a balanced double climb. So come Elims, the first alliance of 188, Blizzard, 2200, MM Rambotics, and 8089, Rockway were the teams to beat. And let's talk about a Cinderella story here really quickly. 8089, it's their first event ever. They're a rookie team. They missed three matches at the end of their first day because they were having firmware issues with their motor controls. They're back moving and hanging for the end of um, before alliance selections. So talk about a Cinderella story there. So the first seed, arguably their toughest matchup, would be in semifinals against the strong fourth seed of 610 Crescent Coyotes, 4039 Makeshift Robotics, and 6323 Hayden Robotics, who had two climbers and three capable shooting robots. The scores were tight because both alliances showed in quarterfinals that they were capable of 200-plus point matches. But when they went head-to-head, -head, it was the first seed that came out on top. Something Durham taught us is that low scoring is not to be underrated early in the season. The finalist alliance was actually captained by an everybot of 2609 Beaverworks. They had their alliance partners 4976, Reroll Robotics, and 7603, Vesper Robotics. It was some tough fought matches, but the autos of 188 and 2200 were to die for. They had a feeding auto from 8089, and it was just bang, bang, bang. I think in the finals they might have gone four out of five inner shots in auto. It was insane. The triple climb made possible by 8089 meant they just couldn't be outscored. So they went undefeated in a limbs to get that blue banner. I'd love to give a huge shout out to 4039 on the Chairman's Award because it is an incredible achievement to win Chairman's five years running and I can hardly think of a group of people that are more deserving. And another big congrats to 4946, the Alpha Dogs, on their first ever Engineering Inspiration Award. So next we'll go back to Sohabe if he's back. Uh... Otherwise, we can have Dan talk about Miami Valley. Hey, all right. All right, everyone. So I'm going to take over Miami Valley, and hopefully uh, I can do a little bit better. Um, so here in Miami Valley, so down in Fairburn, Ohio, we saw 60 teams from seven different states compete to take home the gold at the Miami Valley Regional. It was a 90 qualification match event. Coming from a district model, that's just insane. 
But after the 90 qualification matches, we saw Team 54-13 Stellar Robotics from Shelby, Ohio, take the number one seed with a ranking score of 2.33. They invited the 13th ranked team, 1736 Robot Casserole from Peoria, Illinois, to join their alliance. Peoria, Illinois, to join their alliance. Rounding out that alliance, they invited Team 4930 Electric Mayhem from Buffalo, New York. So on the number one alliance, they are fought, fought hard out of the gates going into quarters, going against the number eight alliance of 5492 Winter Circle Robo Jockeys, 3814 Pi Botics, and Team 3324 The Metrobots. They ended up losing to them in the quarterfinals in tight matches of 170 to 179 and 153 to 164. In the end, it all came down to the end game where we saw the first match, the Red Alliance only scored two climbs that were not balanced while the Blue pulled off a balanced triple climb. Sound familiar to what Tegan was talking about a little bit earlier. The rest of the quarterfinals saw no upsets, so Red won all of them except the 4v5 matchup with the fifth Alliance winning in the tiebreaker. In the semifinals, we saw the eighth seeded Alliance, uh, which was the Red Alliance now, upset the first match of the series, 143 to 184. And the 8th Alliance was able to take down the 5th Alliance thanks to excellent shooting from Team 33-24 and impressive self-balancing adjusting climb from 38-14. We also saw the second seeded Team 340 GRR uh, Greater Rochester Robotics 1787 Flying Circus and 3266 Robots Are Us beat out the 3rd Alliance in a two in blow-up matches 156 to 127 and the final match which is 211 to 120. Now, in the finals matches, it came down to some fierce and fast scoring by the number two blue alliance, Team 340 and 1787, which perfected their coordinated in taking and shooting routines over the course of the weekend and even through eliminations. And they got the perfectly nice coordinated auto. Um, for the most of the match, we saw 1787 collecting on the far end, while 340 made the long run back to the loading station, where 1787 just basically paid cleanup to have that closed loop scoring. At the end of the day, in just two matches, the second alliance from the blue alliance took home the win in the finals with scores of 182 to 225 in finals one and 128 to 202 in finals two. Now, into the awards department. We saw team 3324, the Metrobots, take home a silver cling bling. Dan, or Chris, can we get a cling bling? Cling bling. Cling bling. Cling bling. Cling bling. <laughs> there we go. Uh, with not only the finalist hardware, but also an engineering inspiration award. Congratulations to 1511 Rolling Thunder for taking home the Chairman's Award. Another congratulations to Team 8027, not the droid you're looking for, for winning the Rookie All-Star Award. Wrapping up the event, we'd like to congratulate Team 5492 for getting the wild card and 1038 for, for their mentor, Jimmy Nichols, for winning the Woody Flowers Finalist Award and for all the great work he does for FIRST in the Ohio region. Now, we're going to talk about the Hoth Original. Yes, the Hoth Regional. For those non-Star Wars fans out there, the Great Northern Regional. In Grand Forks, North Dakota. Surprisingly not terrible negative like 20 degree weather. So that was that was a benefit to the teams there. Um, it was a great showing of teams competing. Um, but it was not a, a single alliance there didn't make it to uh, position control, but nowhere did. So not a huge surprise there, but um, I thought at least one time it would have happened. So no extra rank points for that. Um, it was a hard battle for some of the top tier teams that had a really good robot to qualify and seed high, um, just getting matched up with two other robots that weren't able to climb. Uh, so that kind of shook up the rankings a bit. Um, so taking the first seed position was 3293, the Autobots from Fergus Falls, Minnesota, um, followed by 1619 and 5913. Um, so that alliance selection kind of got a little interesting with that. Um, so when 3293 tried to take alliance two, they declined. Uh, 1619 decline and then seed three also declined and offered to seed one. Um, so that that uh, ended up making not any like super alliances able to happen. Um, so 3293 um, ended up picking 5172 the Gators, which were very impressive shooting and quick climbing robot. Um, but they seeded 12th overall, so they pretty much had to say yes at that point. Um, they did end up going pretty far. Um, so the uh, getting into the quarterfinals, we saw the only uh, upset there, um, and it was in a kind of a weird, controversial 2v2 uh, tiebreaker match. Uh, at T equals zero after a timeout, uh, robots weren't on the field, and they shut the gates. Um, so it was a two versus two match there, um, and the uh, sixth seed ended up upseeding the third seed. Um, 
But then in the semis, they lost out there. So in the end, in the finals, it was a uh, one versus second seed. Uh, the first alliance of 3293, 5172, and 4198. Again, seed two, 1619, 876, 4593. Um, in the first round, second alliance, seed alliance, blue lines, they had a small lead coming out of autonomous. Um, and they pretty much just kind of held that all the way through the match with two really strong shooting bots. Um, at the end of the first match, all six robots were hung and level. So it did come down to that those uh, power cells getting up in there. Um, the, the, there was only a four point difference if you took away penalties in the match. So, uh, round two could have been very interesting, but it was pretty much just another blue, just pounding out those shots up into the higher goal. Um, red Alliance had more in the inner port, but it didn't make up for the just sheer amount that blue had been able to put up through that, uh, top port. So they ended up taking home that blue banner it was pretty cool. Um, also, congratulations to 1792 Roundtable Robotics on the Chairman's win and 2500 HeroBots on their engineering inspiration. Uh, we're just going to go right into an ad break with our producer, Tyler, to talk about our sponsor, Striker. I mean, if only I could say it that good, Chris. But yeah, I want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker once again for sponsoring uh, the Weedon North uh, show. Guys, we don't know about Stryker, S T R Y K E R. Go check them out. Lots of fantastic jobs all over the country. Uh, some great, even internationally. There's some from Turkey. I just looked up uh, internships uh, currently still available. Guys, I mean, if you want to go to Moscow, you can do that apparently too. Why not get some international travel during all this, uh, you know, healthy season? So, uh, but otherwise, uh, lots of great stuff going on all around the country that you can check out internships co-ops uh fantastic careers guys if you want to work for a company that actually supports you being in first go check out careers.stryker.com forward slash first to find out what's available to you and if you didn't hear before if you're looking for an internship they actually at least i know for their uh corporate headquarters in uh kalamazoo they actually provide a housing stipend, and that is freaking awesome. So if you're interested in a great company, uh, their headquarters, their new innovation center, literally looks like you just walked into Google. So cool. Go to careers.strykr.com forward slash first to learn more. Awesome. All right. So with that done, it's a busy week in the northern region. Uh, so we have seven events on the agenda. I'm going to kick it off with the Sherbrooke event. So bonjour. I'm not going to do it in French this time because no one seemed to be a fan of that last year. So that's fine. Uh, longtime Quebec powerhouses of the team 3990, Tech for Kids, and 3360 Hyperion are starting to see more competition in this region. So Sherbrooke is not an easy win for that alliance. Uh, we've got some great showings from other teams last year, like 5618, PLS, 3996, Ricky Tick, and 3986, Espresso. There are also some notable visitors coming up to Quebec, including 2013 Cyber Gnomes from Ontario, who are pretty good at shooting games if you've checked them out in 2016. Uh, speaking of 2016, Mighty Monkey Wrenches are coming up from New Jersey, and surprisingly from Brazil comes the Brazilian Trailblazers from 17... Uh, 1772. So don't call this one yet. It really is anyone's game. All right. So moving on down to the Midwest, uh, I would like to say this week two Midwest, it could be really anyone's game. Um, we have 111 Wild Stang, who's always, who's been really on the up and up, made a dine sign last year, doing a great job. Uh, and meanwhile, there's also 930 McGuanago Bears. I said that name right. You can check. Yep. <laughs> From coming down from Wisconsin, hoping to take the crown away from Illinois teams. Now they made the finals last year of Einstein. They impressed everyone, and I've been following them for a few years, and I can definitely say they're still they're still strong. So keep an eye out for them. Uh, also from Wisconsin, there's 1675 Ultimate Protection Squad and 1732 the Hilltoppers. Uh, some big name Wisconsin teams hoping to get the title as well. But to defend this, defend Midwest uh, in Illinois, we got 1625 Winnebago, or Winnovation rather. Um, there is uh, 2338 Gear It Forward and 2451 Ponage as, you know, the big the big guys who hopefully going to stay and defend their title. Uh, but keep an eye out for some uh, teams such as 3352 Flaming Monkeys, 
Control Z 4096 and Bear Botics 2358. I think they're also going to be really, really hot this year. So, yeah, let's move on to Lake Superior. Hold on, guys. You know, before we move on, I think we're missing on a really big team that is going to be by far my favorite for the Midwest Regional, and that is 1756 Argos, who had an absolutely phenomenal reveal and, in my opinion, are by far a lock to win the Midwest Regional. So I just need to step in and give them some props because they are by far my number one pick to win this event. Will you bet money on that? <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll take that bet. Yep. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, things going down. Hot takes. Things going down. <laughs> no, 1756 is a great team, and I definitely think they will go far in Midwest. All right. Well, with all that said, the Lake Superior and Northern Lights Regional. Going to kind of mix the two because they happen under the same roof at the same time. It's crazy. Only a carpet really separates the two, and it's a fantastic time. 120 teams under one roof in Duluth. It's going to be a great weekend, a great competition. At Northern Lights, you got teams coming from all around Minnesota, a couple out-of-state teams, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, and even one state out of the states, Sweden. Yes, a Sweden team coming all the way to Minnesota to compete. Um, we got one rookie team there as well, 84-22, Pillager High School. You may want to think about a better name than that, but you know, there's time to come. Um, but there should be some good matches there with uh, 2052, 967, 2826. Um, it's hard to pick just a few from the list. Um, at Lake Superior, uh, it's a bit more local, not as many out of state teams, but bringing a few out of state teams, Wisconsin and Iowa. Um, there will also be two rookie teams there 8372, HNC Storm, and 8416, Ally Robots 1. Not sure if that's a Blue Alliance mistake, but there's a 1 on the end of that name. <laughs> Always fun. What, what about Eli <laughs> Robots 2? Where are they? Who knows? We don't talk about that team. <laughs> um, there are more awesome teams at that event. The now Hall of Fame team, 1816, the Green Machines, will be competing. Uh, 2169, 2175, 4009. Uh, it's going to be some great matches there. A lot of fun is going to be had. Um, it's at one roof, 120 robots, a zillion high, school, high schoolers around. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So we'll throw it on to the next preview. So heading back to Ontario, we've got the first of two events in the Ontario district, uh, Georgian College. It's another one where it's anyone's game. It's the first time this year we're seeing teams like 1325, Inverse Paradox, 1360, Orbit Robotics, 865, Warp 7, 4903 Mustangs, and visitors from the second best district and first, 4967, that one team from Michigan. Uh, not to be forgotten, Beaverworks 2609 is actually back at their second event of the year, coming off the impressive finalist finish they had at Durham. Uh, so it means they're probably likely to do well again. 1325 and 4903 were partners last year, but they came up short as finalists, so they're both going to be hungry for the win. Chairman's is another one where it's pretty interesting. You've got two of the three Ontario District Championships winners attending uh, with 5672 First Nation STEM and 4525 Renaissance Robotics. 5672 won their first Chairman's Award last year, but because they were Hall of Fame finalists, I think that gives them an edge there. Now down to Indiana, talking about Bloomington with Dan. Yeah, all right. So I think Bloomington is kind of, I would say it's it's the best of the best for Indiana, at least. We got 234, Cyber Blue. We got 868, Tech Hounds. 1024, Kilobytes. 1501, Team Thrust. 1720, Tyler made fun of me last time when I couldn't pronounce their name, and I got to say I still can't. <laughs> Fixed gears. Uh, and then we also got 1747, Harrison Boiler. There's just so much power at Indiana at Bloomington this year. So make sure to check it out. Oh, but we cannot forget 7450. Um, I always forget 7457 because they're uh, a younger team, but man, they actually did really amaze me last year. So yeah, don't forget them either. All right. So now going down to the Humber College event. So this is the first time we'll actually get to see 1114 play. And I'm super excited to see what kind of robot they're actually building this year. Um, this isn't even, no, not a hot take. Very cold take. 11-14 is going to win it. The question is, who are they going to win it with? Um, is it 12-41, Theory 6, uh, or their sister team, 12-85, Big Bang, or Team Dave, who they won it with last year, and along with 7-7-1? This is a smaller event with only 30 teams at this event, um, and the higher line says might struggle to actually come around in the Serpentine and actually get a good pick. So lower line says could do fairly well at this event, as we saw at Durham with the Triple Climb Alliances. So we have uh, some teams in that middle tier. So we have team 4343 Max Tech, 5024 Raider Robotics, and 7558 Alta 4. And we think they might form 
a pretty scary alliance for one of those top alliances. So now we're going to move on to our FRC top 10 from this week. Our producer Tyler is going to bring them up on the screen here. So number one, team 188. Uh, Tegan, you saw them in person. What do you have to say about 188? I mean, I'm not surprised at all, to be honest. They were scary. I know in our scouting meeting, we talked about them for a long time just because that robot is so impressive. Uh, I'd like to see how it goes throughout the year. I don't know what they're going to improve, but I'm, you know, I don't want to compete against them again at District Champs, okay? They're scarily good. <laughs> also, 2200. Uh, so that's number two here on our FRC Top 25. They also had a pretty similar robot to 188 as a fast scoring robot. Number three, we have Team 610, Crescent Coyotes. No surprises there. 5172, year in and year out, these guys just build out quality robots year after year. And then number five, it's great to see makeshift robotics always. Um, Tegan, do you want to take the other five? Yeah, for sure. So number six, we've got Robot Casserole, 1736, who was competing... Um, oh, geez, I forget. There's only three people it could be from, and I forget already. It was... Uh, I assume it's Miami, Miami Valley. Miami, Miami Valley. Valley. Miami Valley. Valley. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've played with them on divisions a few times. They're a really great team to work with. Um, I don't know who this Waffles team is, number seven. They seem like they have a really delicious name. Never heard of them before, but they probably did okay. Uh, number eight, we've got 5413 Stellar Robotics. Uh, 4946, our alliance partners, the Alpha Dogs. Uh, can't complain about them. They were awesome to work with. Uh, huge shout out to last year. They had a Dean's List winner who's still on the team. Still really, really good to work with. Love you, Param. And then rounding out our top 10, we've got 1787, the Flying Circuits, who flew their way uh, into the end of our FRC top 10 for the Northern Regional. So this is only people who were in the region. So if they were in the region and went out of state or out of province, they wouldn't have been, uh, you know, they wouldn't have been in your top 10. But if you want to see a team in the top 10, you have to vote. So next week, we want to see more teams voting, more people voting. And that way yes. we can get some more... Uh, some more statistics to look at and all that good stuff. And if you want to be on FRC Top 25, it's what you got to do. So, All right, guys, real quick. I'm just going to go around the table. Who, And I'm going to take the easy one. Who do you think is going to be on the Top 25 or the Top 10 next week? I'm going 11-14. I'm out. Whoa. How could you have predicted well, that? It's not fair. Fine, I'll take the other Ontario event. I want 13-25. They were really good last year with that floor pickup. I'd like to see them make it up there again. I'm going to go with 2052 Nightcrawlers. They always have some crazy tactic up their sleeve. They'll, they'll figure something out. All right. Now, I'm going to go for a hot take here. Now, there are a lot of good teams. 1756, are, they're definitely going to be top 10. Uh, 2451, good chance. 111, Wild same, pretty good chance. 930, but I think 1625 is Winnovation is going to be in the top 10. You can count on it. All right, everyone. So that's pretty much all the time we have for the show. Thanks to everyone that watched tonight. If you want more FIRST Robotics in your life and you like what we do here, all we ask is that you let others know that this is the place to go for your FRC content. And make sure you guys vote on the FRC Top 10 next week uh, for your respective regions. If you got a few bucks to share, we'd appreciate it. But if you don't, we just love to have you on board and we're delighted to have you watch our show. On behalf of myself, Tegan, Dan, and Chris, and our producer, Tyler, as well as the moderators in chat, We'd love to thank you for tuning in tonight, and please stay tuned for the next Region Recap. See you next week, everyone. So long! Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.